Studios. This, this is After 9 with Scott and Kat. Happy motherfucking Friday. And we're off. And it's not just us. Guess who's back? Back, back again. again. Um, I love that Eminem is back today with a brand new song. Haven't heard from him in a long time. It, but I think that overshadowed completely by the fact that Dave Lazard is back on the podcast. Dave. You overshadowed Eminem. Congratulations. I usually do. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do look kind of like him a little bit. I feel I feel like Eminem. I feel like Eminem at this height of this date. <laughs> I just feel wonderful. Uh, have you heard the new Eminem yet? Yeah. And what do you think? Uh... I like that he's back to what he is best known for, the clever, the funny, uh, and he's Silly, so... Silly, goofy, that kind of thing, he's right? He's so good. Yeah. Here's a little bit of it, in case you haven't heard it. Just enough that we don't create Get some sort of copyright violation. I mean, that right that's there... That's for the is music catchy. video, in that's, case you're wondering. Yeah, real catchy. <laughs> Like I'm targeted, mind boggling how my profit is skyrocketed. Look what I pocketed. Yeah, the shit is just like y'all have been like talking in. I think legally so that's it. That's all I love, we can do. I love how that's a mix of guess we'll who's see back. see you in court, Universal Music. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it's a mix of like real Slim Shady and Abracadabra. In case you're wondering if you heard that and you mm-hmm. haven't heard the song and you're list- just listening now, going, what is that tune as well? It's kind of a, a mashup of the two. Abracadabra mm-hmm. is... Uh, anyway, listen to it and watch the video too. It plays homage to the old Slim, who he's technically killing off with this album, he says. I feel like Slimmer Shady. Yeah, you're yeah. Slimmer. <laughs> that's, that's me. I'm a slimmest shady. The slimmest of all yeah. shadies. So Dave was actually back last week, but not in time for the pod. But we did play golf last week. Dave's hitting the ball a ton, Cat. You would be proud to see this man hit Good a ball. Good on you, buddy. And it's even straight now, which is different from the last 15 years. Did, yes. did, did you just like, did you, have you been like secretly practicing or just happen to have a good game? Uh, can I tell you the truth? Uh, yeah, and maybe please. those hack amateur golfers like me who don't play often um, can relate, but also could probably use the advice. Stop trying to murder the ball. Yeah. I Honestly, that, that was the big difference is I just didn't mm. try to throw everything I had in every shot. And I, this is going to sound so stupid, but I jokingly said this on the course a bunch of times as I watched the PGA Championship the weekend before, <laughs> like beginning to end. And I've never watched a golf tournament on TV like in that. I was so invested yeah. in this. And I'm like, because I always used to joke, I'm like, golf on TV is the stupidest thing ever. I want to be outside. I want the, the greenery around me. I love the outdoor. Like the, the, the maintenance of a golf course impresses me. I love Beautiful. all that stuff. Yeah. But I couldn't bring myself to watch it. And then for this, for whatever reason, I did. And I was enthralled. And I was just watching little things that they were doing. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't need lessons. <laughs> I'm, going to the, well, I'm going to the course. And uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't play a lot that day. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just nice to not try to murder the ball. Yeah, you've uh, you've certainly calmed down. And the irony is you actually can murder the ball. Like yeah. Back in the day, you were cranking them out there 300 plus yards. It was pretty wow. crazy to watch. But with zero consistency. Mm-hmm. Like one, one would go 300 yards. The next drive would barely pass the tee blocks. You know, like I, I would just duff it and, and there was I'm, no consistency. Yeah. Those always made my day when you did that. Yeah. I, I don't have consistency either. <laughs> yeah. Scott's a, Scott's a funny golfer because he's very encouraging. He's like, he's very, when you're having a bad game, he's very good to help. And he's like, yeah, I was noticing your hands are kind of twisted a little bit or your foot, your footing is mm-hmm. off. But if you're playing well, Scott doesn't say a goddamn word. Yeah. No. <laughs> he doesn't say, because he gets competitive, yeah. right? So he doesn't say anything. Yep. So I can always tell if I'm doing well by how little Scott talks to me about <laughs> golf yeah. when we're golfing. You're he'll, a giveaway. He'll yeah. be in his backswing and I'll be walking toward the hole. Like, I'm not even fucking waiting. He's, just, <laughs> he's not watching it. He's not going to look. He's nothing. No. Great. No. And I think we've told the story about when I hit him. Yes, I think so. I think I did hear that. Right yes, I did. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, 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 yeah we're yeah. at uh, Taboo yeah. uh, up in oh, Gravenhurst. I missed that course. Such a good course. Um, it sounds like a nightclub. Taboo. It does. It was of, at yeah. one point. It w- was it? Okay. All right. <laughs> Maybe connected to a strip club or something. Yeah. Uh, um, mm-hmm. yeah uh, he, Scott made a faux pas in golf because he went ahead before everybody had shot their tee shots. So he had shot one and he's like, ah, I know where my ball went. It went off to the right a little bit. So he went and it was an elevated tee up kind of like, uh, <laughs> we're like in the rocks. It's a beautiful course. And you, you actually shoot kind of downward towards the hole. So Scott goes down and, and is looking for his ball. I hit the ball and I think we were playing with double G. We were. Right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I hit it and I, I get a, a good slice going to the right and du- we're playing with the double G and he goes, I think that's going to hit him. <laughs> 
<laughs> just like that. I think it's going to hit him. I, I think it's going to hit him. And I went, no. Oh, Scott, four, score, four, four. I'm like yelling. Scott looks up and it's and he goes, oh, shit. And it's like he found the ball as it was coming to him. And it was like a heat seeking missile. And <laughs> he started running to the right. And my, it's like my ball just went, nope. I'm, I'm getting him, and he and it, the ball just curved and and hit him at, while he was running away from the, the ball, mm-hmm. and it hit him in the ass. And Did you it, get bruised? Oh, a, you should have seen the welt on my butt. Huge! You could see the dimples Back. from the, the golf ball. I was oh. looking forward to sitting in the hot tub afterwards. I couldn't. It oh hurt. my god! Uh, it was bad. Wow. Yeah. But that's the etiquette that you learn about. Well, but yeah. any, anyhow, anyhow. Uh, okay, before I get to this uh, completely asinine question from. From a uh, Gen Zer about Gen X oh, okay. and millennial lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we get to that question that came up again, and it seems like it comes up every year. So I'm curious to hear what you think, Dave. Especially as the dad of two girls, there's a suggestion on Reddit that maybe in 2024 it is time to normalize anybody being able to take off their top at a beach or a public pool or a water park. Are we at a place in 2024 where everybody can do it and nobody thinks it's weird? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think we are too. Yeah. I would think so. But in, in put, Europe, it's it's much different. Very different. We put it this, is. We put this question out on the show today, and I'm amazed at how many people said, love to, but nope, because there's too many creepy guys out there. Right. I think that was based on their own comfort levels. Like, uh, sure, it's fine, but I would never do it because of this. Um, I wor- I'm not worried about the, the the women with the tops off. I'm worried about, because it got opened up suddenly. Remember when we were talking about it? People were like, well, I think it should be open for everyone to, to not dress if they don't want to. Mm-hmm. That's Wait. the last thing I want. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I don't trust people. And there's a lot of gross people out there. Whether it's per- perversion or whether it's pedophilia, I, I don't want my kids around any of that. Got it. Know what I mean? Yeah, sure. That's fair, right? That makes sense. No, it makes sense. But we like, know in Ontario, if a woman wants to walk down the street with her top off, she can. Yeah. She can. But do you see it? Never. Has anyone seen it? No. I haven't either. Not once. I haven't either. It, we have the right to. I never see it. I think I did once, but it might have did been you? after. It looked like it was after maybe a scrap and the person <laughs> didn't get their shirt back. Got right. it. Got right. it. Right. I've Got seen it. that too, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after you've been brawling in the parking lot, you don't care if your tits out. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> the, the best is like after a nightclub fight and girls... Girls' oh, yeah. outfits are always very different than guys. Guys, we have shirts, button up, either a t-shirt, hoodie, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward what a guy wears. Women, though, there's sometimes straps, two, two tops, thing, one yeah. strap, two straps, yeah. chain straps. Uh, you're you're wearing uh, uh, onesies. Like you're, oh, no, they're not called onesies, but what are they called? Yeah, yeah, rompers. Rompers, jumpers. Thanks, yeah. Jumpers, yeah. Rompers. So you've got all kinds of stuff. I remember, I remember seeing a fight after a nightclub night once. Um <laughs> Those are the best. That's a woman, two women. Uh, the one woman, like they're buying hot dogs. So it was clearly after 2 a.m. Like bars are closed. Uh, and they, I, they, I think that the, the guy serving the hot dog gave the wrong one or gave one to somebody oh. out of line or something like that. Of course someone was And pissed. it was like, oh no, hell on earth. Like <laughs> you just made a Not big mistake. Oh, yeah. Shit. So the girl starts screaming at the guy. And is like, what the fuck are my hot dog? Like, what the fuck? Why'd you give it to them? I was here first. Like, just being an asshole, right? And he's like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, two seconds. He's like, you guys look alike. And then the other girl goes, I don't look like that bitch. Oh, and then no. tried, tried to walk away. So then the other one who was screaming at the oh, hot dog guy was like, no, that's on. it. So she went up and pushed the other girl. They turn around and just, women are crazy when you fight. Mm-hmm. Like, swings and claws. and Oh, and, yeah. Uh, hair pulling. Oh, you gotta go for the hair. Eyeball gouging. Yeah. Like, you're nasty. So anyway. Anyway, this woman had, as I described before, like the one strap. Yeah. It kind of looked like Andre the Giant. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. And his, and his singlet. Hey, yeah. you see that shirt and you think Andre the Giant. I, I know. Yeah. I know exactly what you were talking we about. all think that. So yeah. anyhow, during the fight, the the side without the strap got yanked down. Right. And just big old flopping tit hanging out. <laughs> She's still fighting, and you just see it's like a third hand, like, <laughs> like swinging underneath the arm. Oh my god! I can honestly, I, re- I can recount many times where we couldn't even move when I worked at the beat first time around. We had this Hummer, whatever. We park it at the club. It was called 
Revolution nightclub. I remember, remember Rev? Rev. So yeah. we'd park it. I got really drunk there one night. <laughs> we parked it by like the whatever. We were safe to park there, and that was our spot. And for some reason, there was always fights behind the Hummer, and we couldn't move any other direction because we were up against a wall. So we'd have to literally be like, yeah, listen, we don't care if you bitches want to fight, but can you at least just move it five feet over because we really want to go. Like it's two a.m. We want to get out of here. We've been up forever. Mm-hmm. Can you get the fuck out of the way? And we <laughs> to the point where sometimes the guy I was working with Mocha, we all know Mocha, oh, yeah, yeah. would just back the start backing the Hummer up, not give it a fuck. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. beep, beep. Yeah. Like, he just he's like, I want to fucking go we, now. Yeah. Move, bitch. Same. Get thing. out the way. Same thing. And my favorite. So that fight in particular, the hot dog fight. Um, there, there was a guy. It's always one guy in the back who has that voice, that distinct voice, and the guy just goes. That bitch titty out. <laughs> <laughs> like it titty. Was, that, that bitch, bitch titty, titty out. out. <laughs> I, oh, that's great. Oh, it's, it has to be 15 years the ago. Titty ten, call. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe. <laughs> but that, like, that's I still amazing. Like, that bitch titty out. <laughs> oh, that's this great. is pre like iPhones recording it time. Yeah. yeah I don't remember a lot yeah. of like, you know, world star or anything like that yeah, happening yeah. at the moment, but it was, it was a, it was a brawl. Like and I'm telling you, guys will throw a couple punches. They'll sort of square off a little bit, throw a couple and then get gassed out and be tired. But, uh, and it usually gets to the ground and they scrap a little bit, but man, women are yanking earrings out uh-huh. They're They're going for anything. Did the third arm hit anything or? I'm sure there was some bruised ribs on the other person because there was there was some some there, slappage. There, I will say there was some momentum to I that got it. to that pendulum that, that swing. swing. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, yeah. there was some momentum. Uh, okay. Let Let's just say, um, the the hot dog could have been a weapon. Right. The, the titty could have been a weapon. Right. Like this was not a fair fight. Oh, that's great. When you do club gigs, everybody, it gets a little repetitive. Going to the same club every week and it's the same DJ and it's the same bartenders and it's basically the same music and it becomes a little routine. So when I was like hard into the clubs doing like five nights a week, it used to make my day when security would radio to the DJ booth. You got to fight outside. They would always do it on the radio, and I had them put a, 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 one of the walkies in the DJ booth Perfect. so that I could hear what was going on. And I'll tell you, I could have been in the middle of a break on a live to air, and if I got the code for there's a fight outside... I'm out. See you. I'm going to watch this fight. Yep. It was the most entertainment I had. I mean, that was my Saturday late night entertainment for decades. Yeah, that's right. When did that intrigue start for you of the com? I, I don't know if it's combat or seeing something you're not supposed to see, because for me, I remember it in school. Oh, they're going to fight behind the uh, behind. They're going to fight behind the rec or the rec center. Ah, yep. oh, just slightly off school property. Or mm-hmm. they're going to fight behind the portables. Yep. And the crowd that would gather Mm -hmm. just to watch that and it it, is that where it started for us or is that is it even younger than that do you think that we just were like oh we want to see this drama like where did that start for us yeah it's the schoolyard (laughs) fights always used to be interesting but back in the day the schoolyard fights at least had somewhat of a set of rules to them now i feel like if you get into a fight at school you're on your own (laughs) because people are pulling out all kinds of shit i feel like if scott got into a fist fight with somebody now he would try to implement the schoolyard rules like, okay, no punching in the face. I'm going to get grounded. Like, yeah, exactly. If, I, yeah. if I'm bleeding when I go home, yeah. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, don't touch like, the hair. You can't. Yeah, don't pull the hair. None of that. Yeah. If I get grass stains on my <laughs> jeans, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> we used to have each other's back, too, because we'd all go in a circle in the yard where I went to elementary school. We'd, we'd be in a circle so that the teachers couldn't really see until they got close. But people would be able to say, like, no, teacher coming, teacher coming. And then that was that was also one of the rules. You broke You broke up instantly. Broke apart. Because if a teacher comes, you don't want two people to be in trouble. Right. You'd rather just get out of it and not win that fight. We used to also, also gather around to watch people French kiss. Oh. Yes. Ah, yeah. Did you do that too? Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's nice. We would all st- and it was weird because we I go mean, up wait, close. No. I mean, no, wait, no, I, I didn't did. do that. That was super uh, creepy. We, d- we <laughs> did. Super it's super what, weird. No, it is super hell? weird, but we did because like you would plan to French kiss your boyfriend, can your I, girlfriend. Can like, I ask would, what grade? This was like anywhere between like four and six. It's probably right away, all the way up to eight. Yeah, I was going to say, that's definitely yeah. an elementary school thing. Oh, it's an elementary No, or it definitely wasn't school. high school. That would have been school. fucking weird. Yeah, could you imagine No, that? no, this is middle school. Yeah, between four and eight. And it would be like a thing, like second recess. It'd be like Renee. <laughs> I hope Renee's listening. <laughs> It'd be like Renee and Adam are going to French kiss behind the portable. And we'd all fucking gather around and we'd go way too far up close. And if someone's, oh, look at the tongue. Like we... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and we'd be able to, and they'd allow us to watch because it was new to us. Like I've never French kissed someone. I gotta watch this in action. Oh. And you go real up close. They did a tongue flip thing, and then you talk to the girl later. Like how was it? Like, he did this thing with his tongue where he flicked it. It was so cute. 
Like, oh, yeah. Gosh. Like, we would have, like, a Dear Diary session after it. And the guys would be like, I cut my tongue on her friggin' retainer. <laughs> <laughs> I touched her boob for a second. Yeah. Like a graze? Yeah, like a graze. Like, walk away like, and yeah. like, ah. Oh, my God. <laughs> By the way, maybe we need to do more of that in 2024. If you want to make out with your partner in public, we should all just gather you around should, and watch. <laughs> send a calendar reminder to people. Oh, PDA, PDA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Imagine. Yeah, that's right. Now the way that they like, I guess there's probably group chats and kids in school. and being like, For yeah, sure. Right behind the portable. Like, For sure. It's got to be. It's got to be different now. Like yeah. now the pe- now, now the word gets out. Uh-huh. I know we're going to do some more nostalgia stories here on the pod coming up, but it was it was notes too. You pass the note, pass it around. Like this this is happening. Fight at this time, whatever you pass around, you destroyed the evidence so the teacher didn't find it. But it was amazing because we used to fight and nobody got seriously hurt. I feel like yeah. now if there's a fight in school, somebody's pulling out a weapon. Because those yeah. assholes bring knives and shit now. You got to stop. Cut that out, man. Old-fashioned fists, Grow scratching, air, hair pulling. Fight the old-fashioned right? way. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't like the... Leave the weapons outside leave this. Leave the weapons. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Maybe maybe that's in the note. Yeah. Leave weapons. My no mom weapons. will get mad if my mom finds out I have a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to get to this. It was a very simple video on TikTok that was incredibly asinine. Simple, simple question. It was just a question. It wasn't asinine. It was I understand totally. why they had to ask it. There's a lot of younger people asking the way we did things back in the day. Are younger people seriously curious about this? Yeah, I think, well, maybe. Here's the question. When y'all are saying that y'all used to drink from the hose, were sinks not an option? When y'all Bruh. say you used to drink from the Bruh. hose, Bruh. were sinks not an option? Of course we had sinks back in the day. Hey, dipshit, while I was out playing in the yard, like <laughs> spending my time outside not staring at a phone all day, yeah. I got news for you. We all drank from the hose. All of us. Because we weren't running inside mm-hmm. to go get uh, a filtered water. You'd have to take your shoes off, first of all, because your parents were like, don't fucking run- walk through my house in those shoes, right? And all that stuff. I mean, I never was in the drink from the hose thing, though. I never did that. Really? I don't recall this that. hot yeah, no, I don't recall. Fancy. I don't recall that. My wow. mom would bring lemonade out for all of us. No, I'm just oh. kidding. She didn't. She didn't. <laughs> but I don't remember drinking from the hose. But I understand the the premise of. Well, can we actually get this answered by someone on on TikTok? A very very. Yeah. In, I don't know who she is, but this response is going viral. A highly intelligent and well evolved member of the Gen X generation is going to explain to this little prick why <laughs> we used to drink from the hose. And by the way, every word of this is true. Listen up. Who's going to tell him? You want me to tell him? We weren't allowed in the house. Our childhood was like one never-ending episode of that TV show Survivor. We are indestructible. We've never sat in car seats. Nobody's ever given us swimming lessons. We've all been either shot with a BB gun or stabbed with a dart. The television stations had to make a commercial reminding our parents that they had kids. Every night on the 10 p.m. news, a voice would come on and say, It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sinks were not an option. No, they weren't. Isn't that spot yeah, on? It's right on. I used to go out first thing in the morning and my mom would be like chasing me out the door. Hold on. You got to eat breakfast. So I'd say, all right, fuck, fine. I'll, I'll have something like a quick bowl of cereal. And then I was outside. Or eight pancakes. Whatever. Eight pancakes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a couple toaster pancakes. <laughs> I, so we would do that. And, yeah. and then you used to jump on your bike and you'd ride around to see where other bikes were. And if there were bikes laying on somebody's lawn, that's where everybody was hanging out. There was no group chat to find out what mm-hmm. was going on that day. If it was a road hockey game, this was a well-organized event. You showed up with your stick and your bike and you were ready to play. Everybody had to bring a ball. At the end of the day, the reason you knew it was time to go home is the rule was typically you got to be home when the street lights come on. Mm-hmm. When the street lights come on, you better be here within minutes. And those were the rules. Maybe you had lunch. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you had lunch at somebody else's house. Maybe you didn't even fucking know that person. And the and can I just throw this in too? Most of the time, your parents didn't know where you ate lunch. They had no idea. They had no clue. Or mm. notice that you weren't or, home or for care. lunch. Or care? Did they care? No. Not really. <laughs> no. They didn't care. Like, they, I think back to my mom, and she's probably happy to have the house to herself all day. If For sure. If I was hungry, I would go home for food. If I didn't go home, well, I must not have been hungry. Yeah, that's I or think, you were somewhere else eating, so eh, at least you got fed some, somewhere else. Eating somebody else's food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were really good at that. 
Shit. Eating food at other people's houses. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Did you have to phone home and see and ask for permission? No. You can stay for lunch, but phone your mom and ask if it's okay. They would. Yes. So th- my apologies. Yeah, yeah they, we would. But it would be in um, it would be started by the other parent. My mom didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't care at no. all. Like, like yeah. I was taking I was taking the like city transit to the mall when I was like nine. Mm hmm. Like, think about wow. that now. Oh, my God. Like, my niece and nephew were almost 10, and that would never fucking happen. It yeah. would never Ever. happen with any of today's kids. Ever. Yeah. The like, thought of putting your kid on a bus before 10 years old, would it's not even an option. And the note on the water specifically, like, these kids today, we talked. I just talked about this with my sister-in-law. These kids today walk around with water bottles all the time because th- they're used to it. Like, so for, for daycare settings, you got to bring a water bottle. For school settings, you got to have your water bottle. They fill it up constantly. My kids don't go anywhere. It's just, like, second habit for them. So even if they are playing outside, they bring their water bottle with them. If your babies first word is Nalgene, you might, yeah. <laughs> you might have a It's a, a different problem. life. I was saying, though, as a millennial, I find it interesting when Gen Z comments about, like, what's it, what was it like having a landline? Because let me tell you, Gen Z has no idea how fucking weird it was. When I wanted to talk to Michelle, I wanted to call Michelle and see what Michelle's up to so we can hang out. I called Michelle's house, and Michelle's parents pick up, whether it's her mom or her dad. You had to have a conversation with the parent before you even got yeah. to the kid. And it was uh-huh. always a lot of the same. Of How like, are you doing in math? And not that you didn't like the parents. You just really uh-huh. wanted to talk to Michelle to tell her the shit that happened today. Like, yeah. I just want to talk about the gossip of the day. I want to talk about what we're doing this weekend. How's ha- your mother? How's your mom? Oh, I don't know. Call her, how's, bitch. What I'm do you, busy. <laughs> do you like your teacher this year? It's too bad you guys got split up. And oh, how's Tracy doing? It's Tracy. I don't fucking know about class. Tracy, how Tracy's doing? Like, I just want to talk to Michelle. You yeah. forgot about the classic intro, though, Kat. Every call began the same way. Hello, Mrs. Callahan. Can Kathleen yeah. come to the phone? <laughs> You had to be very absolute. You're absolutely right. And I always knew when it was a friend of mine based on how my mom answered because it would be the same thing. Like, oh, it's nice to hear from you, Jen. We haven't seen you around here. And he, get the fuck off the phone. Give me yeah. the phone, mom. <laughs> Give me Jen's the phone. Jen's in some shit. And I got to yeah. talk to her about it. And that's the other part is that you sometimes didn't know what to answer. Once you got to those grades of like six, seven, eight, when you're a little rebellious sometimes, and they'd be like, so how was the sleepover? I'm like, oh. Fuck. Or how was the party? I'm like, oh shit, they stayed out late and they were supposed to. Good, good. Yeah. I went, uh, yeah. What time did you leave? Like, 10? Even though you know you didn't leave at 10, but you're trying to cover their tracks. Yeah. Like, oh, that's what she said. Good, good. I'm like, yeah. You didn't know who to, what to do there. You're trying to be a good friend and cover for them of whatever bullshit they provided to their parents. Right. It was a stressful time. There was really no anything? chance to come up with a backstory. No, no. Did you hear anything about peach schnapps being at the party? No. 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 You don't even know what that is. What is that? You <laughs> had to, honestly, you had to be on your game. Yeah. I found a, uh, a bottle cap and it says Bacardi Silver. What do you yeah. know about that? No, uh, nothing. What is that? Don't Sweet know. nothing. No. I know nothing about that at all. I don't know. Did you have the phone when you were a kid? Um, and this was high tech at the time where you could have a second line on your landline. Yes. Yeah. So that was huge. So I had my own phone number. Right. That I would give my friends. And then when they would call the house, it would ring different. So that's how I knew it was for me. Uh-huh. So it would be like one long ring for like our main phone line yeah. and then a, a, like a, like a, a short beep. Interesting. So like instead of like ring, it was like ring, 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 ring. Mm-hmm. And then that way you knew who they were, which yeah. number they were calling. You knew so, it was for you. So yeah. They, and did your parents ignore, like would your mom ignore that call or would she yeah. try to take that call? If it call? was for me, she wouldn't answer it. Interesting. Yeah. Were you allowed to have a phone in your room? I wasn't. I did. I wasn't allowed. Yeah. Not until I was 14. But again. Yeah, it might have been right around the same it age. It was a corded phone. Just weird because by 15 I had a, I had cell a phone. fucking pager. Strange. Yeah, see, and right. I had a cell yeah. phone. That was the first time I had my own like phone, phone line, anything. It was my cell phone. That's it. My fucking TELUS piece of shit or whatever that was. Did you ever have a Pearl? The Nokia. I had a Pearl. Blackberry Pearl. I did. I had the Razor. I remember I had the, so I had the Nokia. Then I had the Razor and then I had one of the Blackberry models. I forget. I think it was the Pearl though. Yeah, I think think you're bang on. Did you ever have the brick, like the original Motorola? It was a flip, even though the flip didn't do anything except expose the microphone. (laughs) No, no. And you had to pull the antenna up. Oh yeah. And the antenna did nothing. Whether it was up or down made no difference in the call quality. Goddamn Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Yeah, Yeah, it was another great one. (laughs) Yeah, you're pulling out these antennas and it's so funny that now nothing has an antenna like that. No. But we would pull out these flimsy little like... (laughs) They break so easily, oh, wouldn't so they? Easy, yeah. So easy, so easy. It got in your pocket and <laughs> broke in a week. And you're like, oh. And then at that time, <laughs> new cell phones are so expensive. Well, they are now too. But yeah, uh, even well, they then, do like, a lot more though. Now, they the, do, back yeah. then, they did nothing but calls. I'm trying to think if I even had a game on my phone, or if you could. Or in the or, beginning, I think you would be able to. Right? Was there? 
The texting was awful because it was still the T9 mode. T9. That sucked too. That that's why the, the Pearl sucked. It wasn't a full keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, I hated that's that. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was like you type one or two, three times to get a C. I'm like, yeah. man, I'm going to get carpal tunnel syndrome yeah. by the time I'm 13. <laughs> like, what is this? Lot. But I also, I same thing. I didn't have a cell phone or anything like that growing up. It was just get from phone to phone if you needed to get a hold of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pay phones were my friend. It was yeah. different. It was a different time. People used to pull over when they saw a pay phone. Oh, great. I got to make a call. I got to return a page. All that sort of thing. Now, I don't know whatever happened to all the world's uh, uh, pay phones. They're, they must all be in a landfill somewhere. For sure. Was this recycled e-waste? Where, where did all the phones go? <laughs> They're all beside like the Roger Center seats from the Renault. Yes. <laughs> a big pile of blue <laughs> seats and a big pile of pay phones. <laughs> uh, Dave, I'm curious to know what you would do in this scenario. A Saskatchewan farmer, his name is Barry Sawchuk, which is a very Saskatchewan farmer name. Is that not Mm -hmm. the most Saskatchewan name you've ever heard? If you said, my name is Barry Sawchuk, I would assume you are a Saskatchewan farmer. That's perfect. So this guy, the overalls weren't the giveaway, (laughs) is currently in negotiations with SpaceX over some pieces of space junk that fell on his farm. Barry says a total of seven pieces of space junk fell from the sky last month onto his farm and his neighbor's property north of Regina. Sawchuck says one of the pieces is as tall as he is. He says he has been contacted by SpaceX and is in negotiations to return it for a fee. How much is it worth if you almost get killed by junk from space? How much money should you get for that? Or would you even offer to have it bought back? Because, I mean, I don't know, finders keepers, it's your land, right? What would you do in that scenario? What would I do with it? It's a piece what of would you space do with it? junk. You could, uh, he's got a farm in Regina, and I don't know what else is going on in Regina, but I imagine you could probably set up a hut and charge admission to come and look <laughs> at it. You might be able to, actually. People might <laughs> There's go. There's not a lot else going on. And the directions are straight line. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep driving. How do I get there? Just drive straight and you'll be there. That's Saskatchewan. You'll see it. You'll There's see it. There's no other way to drive. <laughs> it's <laughs> just straight. Just straight. There's no turns. Just it's straight. Saskatchewan at all. It's just a straight line That's right it. through it. Well, when this originally fell, I saw the guy on the news and he was talking about how he was going to put it on eBay. Now he's in negotiations with SpaceX who wants it back. So I'm assuming that SpaceX heard this guy's going to auction this off on eBay, probably to, I don't know, the Russians, the Chinese, whoever it is that might want to know Whoever bids about- highest. That's all it is. That's it. Yeah. And I imagine if it's a government that wants to get a hold of it, because it might have some space secrets from America in there, they'll pay top dollar. Yeah. That's the only reason SpaceX contacted the guy. They don't want it back. They just don't want him to sell it to who they don't want him to sell it to. Yep. eBay's the wrong place to sell that because you're right. You wouldn't know who's on the other side of it. Yep. Be like, Russian Doll 01 is putting a very, yeah, very but, big bid on this. But if um, you're Barry, that's the exact right spot to put it on because it's so public. So if they want it back, I think he, this guy's got to ask for millions of dollars. Millions. Well, how, well, tell, how me, big, tell me what, it was, what it's worth to you. That's the thing. Yeah. Start there, though. You know that they're going to give you a starting bid that's going to be sadder than what they can actually give you. Like, if they tell you half a milli, be like, okay, cool, I want five million. Because then they might be willing to. If there are space secrets there, they've got money. They'll probably be willing to spend it so that you don't give it off to, I don't know, for whoever else you could use Russia, but the Russians. Well, you want, do you want cash or do you want interesting trades considered? Interesting. Tra- okay, what kind of trade? What, what, trade? what, yeah. what could they give you? Give me X. The entire platform, Elon, and I will give you back the space. He fucked it up. (laughs) I can't do any worse. Give me X. For if the option was, we'll give you, say, a million dollars for all seven pieces, or Elon will fly to Regina and have lunch with you on your farm. I'd no. take lunch with Elon in a heart. You would yeah. over a million dollars cash. Over You're a million cash. Full, I would you are shit. full of shit. You are both My yelling, and I don't know why. Because there's microphones. That there. is the most <laughs> ludicrous thing there's, I've ever seen. You, you, you would take. You would take. There's not a snowball's you would take chance of hundred. You would take a hundred thousand dollars over lunch with Elon. Yeah. No, no, no. I no, would, oh, no, no. For a million dollars or. Elon comes to my place and we're going to sit and we're going to have a nice lunch and a nice chat. I'll take the chat with Elon. Fucking horse shit. Not you a, are I don't believe so that. full of yeah, shit. Not a Why don't you believe that? I would bet against that and be the biggest fucking millionaire betting yeah. against you doing yeah. that. I'm parlaying it. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know. Yeah, I'm finding other like side no, bets. No, no fucking. You do it for, a, you would take the $100,000 for that. You would take 50000 I would take ten grand. 
If they said you can Would either you? have lunch with Elon See, or I 10K, think I, I I'd think be like, I'll take 10K. 10 might be my, that's where I'd say. I'd say, okay, Elon, lunch with Elon for, instead of 10K. But then after that, no. 15, now nah, I'll take the 15. I'll take the 20. But if you're having lunch with Elon, you could probably tell Elon your story. He'd probably feel bad and say, ah, you know what? Here's the million anyway. Feel Thanks bad. for lunch. I don't need him to feel bad for me. I, I don't. Okay. I do. I, I need him I to feel bad for I me. I don't trust that to be true. <laughs> you're like, I have been a broadcaster in one of the biggest <laughs> markets in North America <laughs> for 20 years. Do you know how hard that is? <laughs> <laughs> My like, job's what? very stressful. Yeah. Do you know how many awards I have to carry when I move? <laughs> <laughs> People love me. Yeah. They recognize me. Nobody it's followers. very stressful. Yeah. You know how many followers I have? <laughs> By the way, Kat's got a lot of followers. Today, yeah, does. for the first time in ages, I can't even remember the last time Tic Tacs came up on the show. And the reason Tic Tacs Wait. came up is because Tic Tacs is being reimagined. New packaging. They're not going to come in that little clear box anymore. Oh, that's weird. I know. They're going to come in bags and pouches. Two different flavors, fruity and sour. Here's the thing. They're going to make them chewy. The new Tic Tacs that huh. launch in September are going to be chewy, but not like gum chewy, just like chewy candy chewy. You can swallow these fuckers. I always associate, I never liked the flavored Tic Tacs. I didn't like orange or anything like that. Yeah, like that I, wanted, I wanted mint. Give me mint. Right. I don't, yeah. I don't think I like chewy mint. Really? Yeah, I think chew, I think mint to me. I need yeah. a crunch to it. It reminded me of the Mentos thing. Mentos also went chewy, oh, so you can get weird. Mentos hard and Mentos chewy now. I can't do the <sighs> chewy either because you're too used to the, the hard. Mentos the hard stuff. went woke. <laughs> Why go soft and chewy when you can go hard? <laughs> Why go soft when you can go hard? You know yeah. what I mean? That's that's my motto in life. Mm. <laughs> I um, it occurred to me. Tic Tac is basically out of my vocabulary, even though it was a part of my vocabulary <laughs> for many do years. It, Dave, we're doing the story. He kept saying Tic Tac. I kept saying Tic Tac. And then he couldn't look well, at me. <laughs> I'm sitting there fucking looking at the voice of Tic Tac. Yeah, tell yeah. me when I'm doing a story on Tic Tac, how I'm supposed to not say Tic Tac. But then I egged yeah. him on by going, tell me more about the story. And then he's like, fuck, <laughs> stop it. Uh, yeah, you fucked me right up on when that. When was one. the last time you bought Tic Tacs, though? Uh, okay, so. I see them out there on this, like, usually when I'm checking out. I don't care. Joel Arama seems to have an excessive amount of them. I don't carry them around because they're so noisy. Yeah, they rattle. <laughs> they she, she, are she, noisy. Th- like, and that, and that rat, that sound, that shaking sound, I have two sounds that bother me. I don't like the sound of that or the sound of loose change. <sighs> Like, I hate when I have loose change in my pocket. You don't hate like the it. sound of it. Really? I hate it. Like, if, I, if somebody, if I pay, with, let's say I pay for something with a $5 bill, it's a dollar, and they give me two toonies or they give me, a, a, you know, a toonie and two loonies. I, I hate, I have to put them in separate pockets. I can't stand the sound of them clinking together. I hate it. Really? I don't know why. That's so strange. You know, it's funny. I'm becoming very aware lately of sounds that I find triggering. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I found recently, and I know it's going to sound stupid, but I'm so aware of it now. If I hear the ongoing sound of running water, I get all fucking agitated. Really? Running water running gets to me. Water. If if my I find girlfriend's it Oh, really? Yeah. No, see, if I'm like Is it just tap based or are you talking about like not waterfalls? Talking about the water from He's the He's not hose, talking about cat. Niagara Falls. The hose, he? yes, the hose. <laughs> we already talked about this. So, no, if I'm sitting like say in the living room working on my prep for the next day's show and my girlfriend is in the kitchen running water or doing dishes or something like that, it really fucking agitates me. And I can't figure out why. Is it because you want to shut it off? Because because usually like an instinct is, especially as a homeowner or someone that pays the water bill, you're like, how how long are you going to carry this on here? Or the tub's going and you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot. I got to stop the tub before it (laughs) floods the entire bathroom. Maybe that's where it comes from. (laughs) Maybe that's where it comes from. But yeah, that's weird how certain sounds can trigger us. The change one is just awful for me. I worked with somebody who couldn't, uh, couldn't be in the room with anyone chewing. When there wasn't yeah. other ambient noise. Ah, yeah. So I don't like that either. Yeah. What is it? Is Loud it, chewers. Is it the... Mm. Oh, chew- I can't. No, okay, I so know. I go. hate okay. that. No, you're not alone there. I can't do... I can't stand that. If someone's a loud chewer, I have to leave. Really? I have to leave. Really? It Would you tell them? Hey. Whether I'm eating or not, by the way. If I'm eating or not eating. Couldn't you just tell them, hey, shut the fuck up? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I don't think so. How do you say that to someone without, like, hurting their feelings? Hey, shut, shut the fuck, fuck up. up. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. What are you ch- hey, I just didn't know if you knew this, like- but you're disgusting. You <laughs> shut your mouth. Especially if they're eating something like 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 peanut butterish. Do you know what I mean? Where you can really hear the smacking with the tongue and the So they've opened stop. a grilled cheese sandwich and yeah. they're eating it from the inside out. Like that's no. Oh, oh. Yes. That's a gross thought. Yes. I don't like that. Eating grilled cheese from or, the or, inside out. Or <laughs> nose whistlers. People that whistle through their nose freak me out. Like, can you can you go blow your nose or something and come back? Like, 
It drives me crazy. It's just breathing. See, I don't. Yeah, th- but see, teach their own. Yeah, it's but like, if you're talking it, like fucking Gopher from Winnie the Pooh, I mean, that's where it becomes really <laughs> irritating. <laughs> right. The yeah. people that have got that whistle with every word constantly. Yeah. And I, I don't like that yeah. either. Uh, so, no. So oh, I can't stand that. There are some songs that have that in it, and I can't unhear it. Was I hear it? And I can't even listen to the songs because it's even in some music. It's it's. So you don't like the old guy from Family no. Guy? No. Come over here, you mostly on paper boy. There's a Thanks. reason why yeah. they made him a creep because he's yeah. he's a whistle talker. <laughs> All whistle talkers are creeps. There, I said it. So I wouldn't mind seeing you in the basement, <laughs> sitting behind the freezer. Oh, it looks like I dropped my <laughs> pants off. I gotta take my headphones off. I can't. <laughs> Uh, Dave, do we owe any apologies to anybody? Oh, my God. I don't even know where to start. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's start here. Sorry to Slim Shady because... That was a lot of swiping up, by the way. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Been, we really list. fucked that one I've, up. I've, I've been taking notes. There's a lot of people that we need to be very apologetic to today. Slim Shady, uh, we apologize to you because I called myself Slimmer Shady, and that's just rude. Uh, Gen Z and X need apologies. Not really sure why, but they... Probably believe they deserve one. I think so. Um, so deeply regretful to anyone who had a titty out when fighting for your <laughs> hot dog after the club. <laughs> Apologize right now, Scott and Kat, to all the hoes out there. Sorry, we, hoes. That we Sorry, drank, hoes. That we drank from as kids. Um, regards to those who made out in crowds with embarrassment. Uh, without embarrassment, actually, that was kind of weird, and we're very sorry for being such weird. So pervs. awkward. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was very, yeah. very. Oh, it was. It was a learning experience. It was. We, we I thought. We I thought were. it was research. I was taking notes and shit. Yeah. Like, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tilt your head that, and they'd always tilt their head way too fucking far, and you're like, I think you're tilting your head too far. And this. <laughs> You're, you're critiquing their, their totally, and I hadn't even kissed yet, and I'm like, mm, that's too far. I wouldn't do that far of an angle. You're that on like a 90 un- right now. You should be on a 45. He must be new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's definitely not good at that. And did it did, did it go around where it's like somebody would get a reputation as a really good kisser, and then everyone else wanted to kiss them? Absolutely. Really, certain people yeah. were known to be uh, good at this. Absolutely. I was the Ric Flair of the fifth grade. <laughs> 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 Well, they're the ones that didn't shut their mouths, right? Once you figured out what a French kiss was, you wanted to like tongue the whole time. They're, you got to take breaks there. And there's some people who just open mouth. Nobody wanted that. You Did, wanted to get a heads up. Don't kiss that guy. Can I, I, I can't even this. do it anymore. My jaw gets tired. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I'm an adult now. So I, thanks. I swear to God, I said that to my wife earlier this week. I'm not even joking. She, she leaned in to give me a kiss and I, I jokingly pulled back. I was like, oh, and she goes, kiss me. And I go, what am I, 12? <laughs> 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 Anyhow, oh, uh, where are we? Just here? go right to the beach. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't we just get this done? Yeah, why? Why are you kissing why? my mouth? Like, <laughs> 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 uh, regards, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay below the equator. Uh, loads of apologies are owed to Elon Musk because neither Cat nor I would pass up cash to have lunch with him. <laughs> and I don't think Scott would either. Truthfully, I no, really don't. No. Uh, I think you're saying that in the moment. But if there was a check ri- in front of you, I don't think you're changing. Or I think you're changing. Your mind. Nobody who knows you believes Somebody you. Somebody make me an offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elon's like, I'm not paying for lunch. <laughs> Why would I take you for lunch? Um, apologies to everyone who lives in Saskatchewan. You. It, it really does have a few left and right turns. It's not just a straight line. Uh, and also, apologies to Mike Tyson. Not for any reason in particular, but just because it is a good idea. He's looking good, too. Good looking strong for that fight. Mm. Well, there was that whole thing yeah. on the plane. Other than, like, the mild stroke. He's fine. No, I'm just kidding. Boy. He didn't have a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be he'll be great. What was it they said Mike Tyson had? No, he had a he Gall had an ulcer. Ulcer. People have ulcers. It's fine. So Jake, just punch him in the ulcer. Like I mean, that seems like the surefire way to win this fight. Yeah, a Jake Paul kidney shot, and then it's all downhill from there. Is I, what it feels like. I, I really feel like it's going to be like a three punch knockout. Like I feel like Mike Tyson, if if it's a totally fair fight, all things equal, no no interference, no plan to make it last four or five rounds. I think Mike Tyson could kill him in three punches. Oh, Apparently, he's not allowed to knock him out. Did you guys hear what? that, too? Apparently, he signed something that said he wouldn't knock him out. This is just all online gossip shit. But Wait, who's not going to knock him out? Tyson, Tyson said he's not going to knock him out? signed something that said he wouldn't knock him unconscious. Mike Tyson Listen, I don't know a, if that's true. I'm just saying that's what people are saying. Mike Tyson's a killer. Isn't that the like, point? You watch his fights. Like, I know he's yeah. not the same guy he was 25, 30 years no, ago. No, he's riddled with ulcers now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every punch every punch is ulcer, ulcer, ulcer. Oh, fucking. <laughs> I half wouldn't Reflux. mind though. If, if this is, do you think this is the comeback for Mike Tyson? Could he go on no. like the senior boxing circuit? Because I'd really like to see him fight Conor McGregor. 
No, I don't think so. I'd no. love to see it. I, I want him to not fight it. I thought that was super sad when Evander Holyfield and George Foreman were fighting in the like, their 60s. And well, like, they were too fucking old. This is this looks bad, but they were good. That was the thing. But, you know, then you hear from, like, you know, the Leon Spinks of the world and those people who are super punch drunk and, and you know, just got decimated by boxing. I don't know, man. I don't think I want Mike Tyson to do that because I, I know he has a life outside of the ring. Right. I doesn't. He doesn't need oh. this. Don't you think that'd be a good fight, though? Mike Tyson and Conor McGregor? Boxing? That'd be amazing. People maybe, would love that. Maybe More than like people would love it. Maybe in, like, a video game. But, like, <laughs> today, honestly, like, no. In their prime, that would have been a different fight. Mm. That would have been interesting. Mm -hmm. But I think Tyson would have murdered Conor McGregor in a boxing fight. Yeah, I think so. And it would have been easy. Okay, are you done the apologies, by the way? Or Yeah, sorry, I'm done. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> we will see you back here on Monday.